It's time to pull those belts tight, race fans. The Front Stretch is coming at you. Presented by Joe's Karting and Council Bluffs. Now, here's Dan Taylor and Dirk Houston. Well, good morning to you, race fans, and welcome to the Front Stretch, presented by Joe's Karting and Council Bluffs, online at joeskarting.com. Fast-paced, white-knuckle racing just across the river on 23rd Avenue. Get over to Joe's Karting today. Do yourself right with a little indoor kart racing. I talked to Buddy Ray earlier this week, and the Winter Nationals are going to wrap up this coming Tuesday night. The Malvern Bank Winter Nationals are going to wrap up this coming Tuesday night. And then they're going to take, uh, they're going to do every two weeks in April, May, and June for the Slick Track. And it's going to be anybody who can come out. No league, just come out and have a good time on the Slick Track. He did say that the PVC that they put over those tires on the, I believe it's the right side they put them on. No, it's the left side they put them on. He said each one of those pieces of PVC have had over 100,000 laps since they started the Slick Track in October. Crazy amount of laps. So they got to replace the PVC is what I'm saying. Joe'sCarding.com, more information, and always follow the Joe's Carding Facebook page for more information. Uh, today's show in turn number one, we're going to recap the results at Las Vegas. Uh, and then uh, turn number two, we're going to sit down with Mark and Cole Vanderheiden. We sat down with him at Quaker Steak and Loop earlier this week, talked about Mark's plans for 2020 and Cole getting into the racing world. Then in turn number three, Psycho Billy from Psycho Billy Cadillac Fan Tour is going to join us once again in turn number three. And then we'll get you set for today's race at Auto Club Speedway, the Auto Club 400. We'll get you set for that in turn number four. But first, let's talk about what happened at Las Vegas Motor Speedway. Dirk, uh, did you get a little bit of uh, high blood pressure every time the green flag dropped for those restarts? Not really. I mean... <laughs> My God! It, the, re, the restarts just seem to come in bunches, and, I mean, Larry Mack's been saying it for years, restarts breed restarts. Cautions so, breed cautions, yeah, you know, absolutely. And it's it was no truer statement than, than what happened at Vegas, and... Uh, um, the big thing I've been hearing and seeing a lot on social media was the fact that they threw that yellow when uh, uh, the leader had already taken the white flag, yeah. and they crashed behind him right basically at the start-finish yeah, line. Yeah, but Dirk, they didn't throw it at Daytona. It's not fair. They throw it. At, they they got to throw it everywhere else. But the thing is, I thought they should have thrown it at Daytona too, but Daytona, they did not crash at the start-finish line. If it would have been Talladega... They'd have been at the start finish line. They right. were clear down past the start finish line. They would have had to race through the mess coming back around. And Daytona was also pretty much just a one car deal with with uh, Chase Elliott. I absolutely agree with you. Listen, when the caution happens and the cars are going to come back around, and before they hit the start finish line or slightly after, anywhere into turn number one, they're going to throw the caution. And it happens to be that the white flag had waved. And so according to the rule book, race is over with. Joey Logano wins the race. I know what you wanted to see him come back to the green flag. Everybody wants to see him run back to the, to the, to the flag. Daytona was different. I know that you may feel like it's different. It's not different, but it absolutely was different. It is a different situation at Daytona. Like you mentioned, Kyle Larson, or was it Kyle Larson or Chase Elliott spun on the backstretch? Elliott. Uh, nope. He didn't spin on the backstretch. He spun going into turn one. And he, he was got going shoot. again. He got going again, but... It wasn't a multi-car deal, right. is my point, even though uh, there was enough smoke and, and you know stuff that I wouldn't have had a problem if they threw the chip. You know, the, the I kind of yellow. anticipated it, too, but when they didn't, I thought, awesome, I'm going to see a run back to the green flag or run back to the checkered flag. That's exact. I, I want every race to finish a run to the checkered flag, but there is safety involved. We know that now from Daytona. We know that all the time. We knew it going before Daytona, but with what happened with Ryan Newman, it's absolutely a good thing that they threw the, the caution flag. Do you think what happened at Daytona with Ryan Newman influenced NASCAR throwing that caution, or is this procedure no. as always? No, I think this was status quo. Absolutely. I mean, where, where the accident happened and a number of cars at Vegas, they had no choice. I completely agree with you. Like we mentioned, Joey Logano picked up the win, finished fifth in stage one, fifth in stage two, 52 points on the day. He was the big, big points getter, and in the Rick Haven Ridge Pick'em's contest, he was the favorite pick for the day. I want to say uh, 15 people took him, or 16 people. Low Joey Logano. Yeah. yeah. I won a little money on him over to Maristar. So. Uh 52 points on the day. Matt DiBenedetto. Great run for that 21 car. I'm going to take full credit for that for the front stretch. He had nothing to do with it. The team had nothing to do with it. Their research and development, their 
gradual rise through the through the uh, sport and had Penske, nothing to do with it. Nothing to do with it. It was absolutely coming on the front stretch is what did it for you. But a great second place run for Matt De Benedetto. Uh, not uh, showing up in first two stages, but 35 points on the day. That's great for those guys. Ricky Stenhouse Jr. in the JTG Doherty 47 uh, in third. Austin Dillon in fourth. And Jimmy Johnson. I was really impressed with Jimmy Johnson this weekend. Well, I was impressed with the Chevys this weekend, so yep. I'm uh, really looking forward to see what some of these Chevys can do at Montana. Jimmy Johnson loves that track. He's got multiple wins there. Uh, I think he's going to be a handful there, but on the same hand, so did Denny Hamlin and Kyle Busch. They love that track, too. Uh, Bubba Wallace in sixth. Brad Kozlowski, Kevin Harvick, Kyle Larson, and Ty Dillon round out your top ten. Drivers who did not have a good day. Christopher Bell looked like he was going to have a good day until he was involved in an accident early. He finished 33rd on the day. Uh, Quinn Hoff, who's uh, our buddy with Starcom Racing, finished 32nd on the day. Daniel Suarez, uh, unfortunately, you're starting to see the uh, results of an underfunded team, a, a smaller team. They had issues getting that car to fire on the start of the race. He started, I think, two laps down. Yeah, I don't, I don't think that has anything to do with funding or anything. That's just one of them things that happens every now and then. I've seen the big teams have it every now and then, too. Well, wasn't so. it? Uh, it was Martin Trucks Jr. Was it on a green flag stop at Homestead when they put the wrong tires on the wrong side? Yep. Yeah, during a green flag run. It wasn't the first of the race. But, uh, yeah, absolutely. It was uh, that, it, just those crazy little things can happen. Uh, Chase Elliott, 26th. Ross Chastain, 27th. He had a really good run, too. And he said, unfortunately, just he made too many mistakes to be able to recover from in that six car. Well, he made a couple mistakes late because he was running up in the top 10, top 12 yep. most of the race. And then at the end, then, like he said, that spin was just unexplainable and uh, unexcusable. So, uh that really hurt a lot of fantasy teams because I know there were a lot of one-and-done teams that took Ross, not knowing how long he was going to be in the six car. And they still haven't set a timetable, but Ryan showed up the shop today, and uh, that yeah, was great news to see. And, on you know, Wednesday, he showed up at uh, Roush Fenway Racing, and uh, and they have since announced that, that Ross will continue to be in that six car, at least for this weekend, at Auto Club. Yeah, I mean, it's uh, when you get a, a concussion where you get knocked unconscious, which is obviously it doesn't take a brain surgeon to figure that out with, you know, what happened right. to Ryan. Um, it's going to be a couple weeks. Hey, can we take a minute and kind of sidetrack just a little bit? Because everybody, I, I recently joined Twitter, and so I'm learning a whole new universe, which I'm enjoying it right now. But Chris I'm, won, Dan, nothing. Yeah, I'm, it's going to, uh, uh, it's, it's, it's starting to be painful. But uh, we, I just want to remind everybody, um, Ryan Newman doesn't owe you any updates. It's his own personal privacy to not give you updates. Uh, so when he was injured and, and on the way to Halifax, it is against the law for NASCAR, Roush Fenway Racing, or anybody other named uh, Ryan Newman to give you an update. It is his personal health information. So just because you're not getting the updates that you want to on his health, it's inappropriate to ask him for it on Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> or just, to just make just up your FYI. own. Right. It's inappropriate to do this. I just want to, and that, that doesn't not just apply for Ryan Newman or NASCAR. This goes for anybody. So when you're sitting at your local dirt track and you're upset that you don't know what's going on with that driver, there's a good reason why the announcers are not telling you what's going on with that driver. It's not because they're dead or they're hurt. It's because there is a certain law that forbids you from passing that information on. Which is called HIPAA, by the way. Thank you. I was going to say it, but I, 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 I pronounced it incorrectly in the past. Shocker. Anyway, so getting back on track. Uh, good race at Las Vegas. I just read that they had uh, a double-digit increase in ratings. Pretty good uh, ratings increase for the second race of the year. For first, television. Uh, yeah, uh, first time in three years that the second race of the year has um, uh, seen an increase. Yep. So and good, good, uh, good numbers there. Well, the best thing about it is they got the race in on yeah. time. I, I was a little bit worried after we saw was the, the Xfinity series got postponed on Saturday. Uh, trucks weren't there, right? Trucks are no, off. Trucks for, ran Friday. Okay. Kyle Busch won. Everybody complained oh, right. about that like that's normal. Right. And Kevin Harvick and uh, Truck Series sponsor, yeah, guy that used to be Camping World now okay. it's uh, Gander Outdoor Recreation, right. have both put up fifty thousand dollars to any cup driver that drops down in the trucks and beats Kyle Busch, and Kyle's oh, no. already got his other four races scheduled. It's not for a cup driver. It's just anybody in the field, any truck driver that can cup beat him in the field. driver. 
because you've got guys that are retired that are talking about putting something together. Really? I'm, I must have missed that aspect because I thought it was all about just the younger drivers beating him. It was a straight-up bounty. Uh, Brendan Gaughan asked about it, and they said, nope, you're retired. You can't, you can't come back. You know, you're just running it, four races. It is a good deal. old it's, – it's, it's the same rules as a bounty. You can't wreck him and claim the money. Right. If he gets wrecked, that well, doesn't count. Uh, see, I don't know exactly where the wreck part hangs out because if, if you crash on a restart on a green-white checker or something, to me it should still count, but I don't know if it does. I'm not making yeah. the rules. If it was my 50 grand, I'd say, sure, put him in the fence and just get to the checkered flag. <laughs> not, Kyle's, not, not finish 38 or 31st with him 32nd. you got to win the uh, race. On Sunday, the cup race, they asked Kyle about it in the uh, media center, and he did not seem entertained at all. He didn't care. He goes, I've got good equipment, so I'm a yeah. good driver. Come on. And he's got a really good chance of, of winning every one of those races. He is a dang good driver, and, and I, I wouldn't be surprised if he did. I, however, happen to take the field to, to for that bet, so we'll see what happens. Bounties are always nice, but they can bring out the screwballs, so I know it's, it's always a worry for some drivers about putting bounties on people. Guess who is our current points leader in the uh, NASCAR Cup Series for the first time in his career? The 12. Ryan Blaney. Yeah. How did you guess that? Because that's my job. Oh, you know that. I, you didn't see it on my screen. <laughs> I already knew yeah, that. Yeah. Ryan Blaney with uh, 85 points, three point advantage over uh, Joey Logano, Kevin Harvick in third, Kyle Larson in fourth, and Ricky Stenhouse Jr. top five. It's early to be talking about the points, but I wanted to throw the kid a little bit of credit. He's been doing really, really good the last year and a half, and I hope that he can continue this and he can he can build some momentum. He had a strong car on Sunday at Las Vegas up until you know the wreck. Well, they. <clears throat> they took and made the pit stop. And if he wouldn't have made the pit stop, everybody else would have. And he'd have been out there by himself. It always so. sucks being the leader on those things because there is no – there is no good – I mean, it, if you come, they don't. If you go – if you don't, they come. It's, it's automatic. I mean, you automatically get rid of the leader, and he's obsolete. It's, you're, you're a sitting duck. Yeah, I'll tell you, the person that really got hurt, though, by that restart uh, or by that white flag – uh, crash was Kevin Harvick because he'd gone in and got tires and he was really flying. If he was were, really fast on short runs. Yeah, he might he might have got up there, you know, and, and made a challenge uh, if that yellow hadn't come out because he was passing a ton of cars. And it was really amazing how fast his car dropped off as that race went on. Yeah, 20, 25 laps, but this was, you know, yeah. a four lap run or three lap or whatever it ended up being or green, white, checkered and uh, he, he was definitely fast, but he was so far back, you know, and Logano had the clean air and went out there and took it. And, uh, but it would have been, you know, everybody says, oh, that's, the finish was, you know, anticlimactic or, you know. Anticlimactic. And, and, yeah, there you go, that big word. But uh, I think that uh, Alex Bowman and Blaney would have had a heck of a battle if they'd have got to race those last five or six laps without the caution. Uh, we got left, we got missed out just a little bit there, but uh, we appreciate. Uh, it got, anyways, what I'm saying, great race on Sunday. I, I really enjoyed it. Those restarts were amazing. Uh, can't wait to see what happens today at Auto Club. Big, wide track. Big, wide track. This is Talladega wide. This is Homestead wide. Four wide is not an issue at this place. No, plenty of room for four wide. Uh, we can talk if we got some time in Turner before we get to some of the news and notes. We also covered a little bit of it. Great news for Ryan Newman. Up and walking around and uh, no timetable for his return. He has admitted, though, that he does have a head injury that he is being treated for. Last time we had a driver with a head injury, I want to say it was Dale Earnhardt, Sen uh, Dale Earnhardt Jr., and he spent better part of two and a half to three months off. Well, he took time off, then came back for one or two races, and then took the rest of the year off. Yeah. So, but... Uh, uh, all you sports fans, don't be uh, worried too bad because his head injury does allow him to go fishing. Yeah, he did uh, catch and release, by the way. Nice big fish there he had on Twitter. So uh, good news for him and good news there in that situation. Like we talked about Ross Chastain filling in. By the way, anybody in the Pickums contest that decides to take Ross Chastain, he is not, uh, I don't believe he is gaining driver points for the six car in NASCAR. He is ra he was supposed to be racing full-time for a Cup Series car or was that Xfinity Series? He's he racing, racing Xfinity Series. Okay, so he is, he is qualified for Xfinity Series points. Uh, then, So if you happen to take him in the Pick'em's contest, you will receive points that he would have received if he was qualified for Cup Series points. Just clarify that just a little bit. Uh, I was impressed with his run on Sunday at Las Vegas. I'm excited to see what he can do uh, today at Auto Club Speedway. We're going to take a break. 
Mark and Cole Vanderheiden are going to join us in turn number two. Psycho Billy from Psycho Billy Cadillac Fan Tour in turn number three. And then we're going to come back in turn number four and get you set for today's race at Auto Club. A lot of show left to go. Hope you stick around. This is the front stretch on AM590. Omaha Virtual Reality in the heart of Benson, half a block south of 60th and Maple, is a race fan's haven. Omaha Virtual Reality is a fully immersive racing experience. Sit down in a full race seat with real-time responsive shocks while wearing a state-of-the-art virtual reality headset. Race around Daytona, Indy, Sonoma, and over 50 more tracks while feeling every twist and turn. Omaha Virtual Reality is truly an experience every race fan should try. Put the controller down and get in the game. More info at Omaha Virtual Reality Every race car driver has run into the same problem. It's well past normal parts store closing hours, but you need that one to finish your car. The guys who brought you white knuckle racing by the river bring you Joe's Karting Racing Parts and Tire Store. Open until 10 p.m. Monday to Thursday and open until 11 p.m. on Friday and Saturday. A parts store that fits your after hours schedule and you can turn a few laps at Joe's Karting while you're waiting for your part to get pulled from their warehouse. Joe'sKarting.com for more information. Powder coating your chassis seems like a luxury until you spill nearly anything on it and watch as the paint drips away. That's when you'll wonder why you didn't take advantage of Red Oak Fabrication's high quality, durable, and beautiful powder coating for just $275 on a bare chassis. From simple base colors to glitter line neon colors, a powder coated chassis from Red Oak Fabrication will give you a much more durable surface that your sponsors will love seeing in Victory Lane. Email jordanf at redoakfabrication.com to book your time. We're hooked up in turn two and still showing the green flag on the front stretch. Welcome back to the front stretch. Time for another Red Oak Fabrication interview located on the intersection of Highway 48 and 34 in Red Oak, Iowa and located online at redoakfabrication.com. I know it's getting a little bit close to race season, but if you need any powder coating done, whether it be for your chassis or parts and pieces, maybe it's just your man cave. Just shoot Jordan an email at jordanf at redoakfabrication.com. Jordan f at redoakfabrication.com joining us on the show now the driver of the 15 v sprint car and i'm not sure what his son drives but mark vanderheiden joining us on the show now uh i think i'm saying your name right vanderheiden yep hey all right then probably the crew that? chief probably uh and cole the son of mark joining us on the show mark how are you doing or, cole how are you doing <laughs> good good to have you uh what are you driving these days uh i am driving a t-rex rage cage cart and it w I will be mainly driving at Eagle Raceway. Okay, so you're going to race for uh, points at Mini E? Yeah. And it was a uh, cage cart? Yes. How many years have you been driving? Uh, this is my first year. Oh, really? Are you nervous? Yeah. Have you raced before in cage carts, just maybe the Turkey Chase or the Nebraska Kurt Shootout, anything like that? Nope. So this is brand new. You're gonna you put him on the track a little bit, right? He's been to Joe's Karting quite okay. a bit. Okay. Well, that's that's qualification enough. I told him when if he could beat me at Joe's Karting, we could get him a cart, and he beat me right away. So I said, well, <laughs> he should be all right. So. Did you wreck him? Did you? <laughs> he shook his head. Yes, I wrecked him. So you got the rookie stripe on the cart. He could even hang with the yeah. with the. Uh, very active adults there on a Friday night late, so really? he, he didn't get ran off the track there, so I was awesome. pretty impressed. Did so. you run the road course, or did you run the uh, slick track? Uh, the night. road yeah. course. You ran the road course only? You haven't yeah, done the slick track yet? We haven't no. made it over there for the Tuesday night yet. But. That is a lot of fun, but uh, make sure your forearms are, are good and strong, because you think it's uh, it's tiring on that road course. It's exhausting on that uh, on the slick track. A lot of fun. By the way, I want to say a big thank you to Joe's Karting. Slick Track Nationals, uh, I believe they're over with now. Uh, presented by Malvern Bank. I think Winter Series? I think they finished up, and uh, but I, I assume that since it went over so well, there may be, uh, I would assume there will be a return of the Winter League. Oh, I'm, I'm thinking. Maybe even a Summer League. Uh, yeah, I was kind of wondering that, but with all the racing going on, they may they may hold off and, and just let that. Well, that be a good time for the uh, for the fans to come out, though. Tuesday night's not exactly the hotbed of local That's racing. That's true. That's a good point. <laughs> in fact, I don't think there's a Tuesday night show in the area at all. Not yet. There's a couple of Wednesday night shows. There's a Monday night show. Alta was Wednesday, as well, weren't they? Or Vista. Yeah. Vista. Yeah. All right, so let's get into it. Uh, Mark, you've uh, obviously got the uh, lineage in the family of racing the uh, the 305 Sprint Car, but what else have you driven other than just the 15V? Uh, 21, 22 years ago, I drove a mini late model that my Uncle Randy tried to start a series over um, over in Denison and Jefferson Race, Jefferson Speedway or Raceway, whatever it was, Jefferson, Iowa. Um, it was basically a three-quarter size late model uh, with a motorcycle engine in them. We yep. had about, I think he had seven or eight of them, and I raced that for one year. Um, that was when I was like 20 years old, and 
Then I raced the sprint car, a 305, back in 2013 and 14. Uh, it was the first time I ever raced anything full time, and then sold it all, and then we uh, bought it all back here last year. So I, I think you're you're probably glazing over a little bit there. How come you ended up selling it all, and what made you uh, get back in? Well, at the time when I I, well, I could tell everybody is I was at the point where I was getting a little better every race, um, and I knew at that point that I was going to start wasting more and more and spending more and more, and I yep. needed to get out before it was before it put me in the position I didn't need to be in. Mm -hmm. And uh, we also kind of knew we were going to open up our own business. So um, I set everything aside, and I said we can bring it back if we if we get success with our business, and we did. So then I got to have my stuff back. So And the two kids didn't make a big factor into it, but obviously with them getting older, getting into sports. It's, that, it's that's a lot absolutely. harder now. Yeah. When, they, when I raced before, <laughs> they were younger, didn't have as many sports. Um, but like this year was pretty tough with him, sports every weekend, and my daughters and cheers we got that going on a lot oh, so man, it's that's a, it's fun i tell you i'm in the phase right now where I, I don't know if it's ever been like this because i'm just noticing it but it seems like kids are just as busy as adults these days yeah we're going to dallas tomorrow for a cheer competition oh my god um it's the nationals so it's dallas nebraska dallas, dallas iowa yeah, dallas, Texas. <laughs> <coughs> we started the season in tulsa yeah uh so we travel more with the cheer than most race teams travel but um, it's her passion. It's her love. So that's what we do for her. And he's getting into the go-karts now. We'll see how far he wants to take that. That's the plan with him. Uh, he likes it. He keeps getting better and he keeps getting faster. Our plan is just to keep moving him up. So yeah. um, micros and then the micros to maybe a midget and then the 305. See where we're at. And then I can step aside and he can race more. What uh, are, Do they help much with the uh, 15V operation when you're racing for the, uh, the race savers? Those guys, yeah, yeah, he helps during the week. Um, he obviously isn't old enough to be in the pits there. Um, on the Sprint Series, we went to Park Jefferson and Columbus and down in Missouri. He was able, able to come in the pits there, So, and he was there for the Nationals. So he's he's doing a majority of the work, and I told him the same thing with his go-kart. I said um, if he does most of the work, he keeps learning it, does it himself, That's we'll keep pushing it. But I'm not going to do all the work for him on both cars, but... Cole, a little young into your career, but are you kind of starting to find something in the racing world that you're really enjoying? Are you, are you a behind-the-wheel guy? Do you like the mechanics side of it, the engineering? Do, what, what, is there an aspect you like the most so far? I can't wait to, like, start racing. Yeah. Like, so driving. Drive it, yeah. yeah. There's a couple of guys, like, uh, I, I, got, I think Orion Jenkins off the top of my head. He obviously enjoys racing, but he's going to school to be an engineer, and he really loves the, the mathematics behind it all and, and the and diving into a problem and, and being able to come up with some really creative solution. Uh, obviously, you're a little bit young to still be doing that stuff, but, uh, it, you know, that, that could also be an avenue that maybe the racing, the driving part's not it, but, heck, talk to Ryan Newman. He's, he's got an engineering degree, and, and he's a pretty good racer. So you're going to be racing uh, Mini E for the time being. Uh, any plans to race any specials throughout the year, or is it just let's see how things go with Mini E for now? Well, I, my dad said that we might race at the I-80 one, and I, I don't know what other the ones. The one at Crete. If we can, if we got the same rules, we can go out to Crete, and I think is it Bobcat Speedway up north yeah. here, Blanco. Um, get him some tracks because not we're not going to be able to make every Friday night at Eagle. I don't think this year. So um, if it doesn't look like we're going to make it. Maybe we try one of the other tracks. I'd like to get him at least 15, 20 nights this year yeah. to see how he likes it before we move him up. But. You got any uh, friends in racing so far? Uh, no, I do not know anybody. No? <laughs> well, that's okay. You're not going to make a lot of friends in racing. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> no, I, I again, I think back to like uh, there's a, there's always a group of guys that are running around together and always have a good time beating each other. So I don't know if you were friends with a couple of the other younger guys that are going to be racing at Eagle. Not oh. yet. He'll be in the junior two division, which is 12 to 15 year olds. He's 12, so he's. He's not going to be the oldest one in this group, so he'll have. So he'll have I'm pretty sure he'll have some uh, yeah. coaching from the other kids to see what happens. But yeah, he'll get bumped a time or two. <laughs> as long as he doesn't just fall to the back, I guess that's that's the problem. Have you been bragging to the ladies about your uh, driving soon? Nope. <laughs> he did get. He already got his driving suit. We went to the Chili Bowl yeah. and he got everything down there. So he's, oh no, kidding! You get to go. Is that excited. your first time being down there? Yes. Yeah. Was that your first time, Mark? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. I've chili? never got to go yet. No. It was. We'll be back. Yeah, that was Chili one Bowl. of those. If you go to there and you're in the racing industry, you're gonna want to have your own car the next time you go back. So right. I'd be really surprised if I don't have one by the end by uh, next year. But 
I can hold myself off. I should probably wait a couple years. But. <laughs> We're talking with Mark and Cole Vanderheiden. Uh, Mark driving the 15V. Uh, Race Saver 305 throughout the area. Plans for 2020? What do you, I mean, I know you're going to be supporting your your son's career, but I, I imagine we're going to see the 15V out there once in a while? Yeah, I raced, uh, I think I had 21 nights this year. Um, the plan right now is to race as Eagles many times I can. I really like the Sprint Series. I really like to go into the other tracks, uh, but that's a, another big commitment that will be on a lot of Friday nights that he'll be racing go-karts. So it's all going to depend on the weather, and the weather is always something we have to deal with. So... I just want to keep getting keep getting better each week, and Eagles the track that everybody wants to wants to perfect, and right. you got to go every week if you want to get better. So um, try to get out there as many times as I can and hit up as many sprint series as I can. It's I talked about going to Devil's Bowl, but um, that's just now that I figured out I'm going to Dallas this weekend, and I really don't want to turn around and go back in two weeks. So yeah, why not? Just <laughs> it, the thought was there. I sh- the car is yeah. ready. I could actually go, but that's a long way to go for a guy that doesn't have any experience on a big track like that at this point i've never raced on anything bigger than eagle at this point so it's, oh really that would might be a little big of a sh- and a season shock. opener and it's opener yeah so you'd mentioned that uh you and your wife uh, kind of paused your racing career so that you could start your own business uh it's a chiropractic business uh physical therapy physical, we started okay. gina v physical therapy in 2016 um and that's going well so this last year i decided that it was time that i could get the stuff back to go have fun on our yeah. side so but she enjoys it. She's probably the biggest fan, she'll say. So she loves it at the track. She loves being there every night. She loves listening to you guys or announcers there. So um, she's a big supporter. Now she's like, she says she's got to be scared two nights to watch both her boys. So <laughs> see what happens. But It'd be interesting to talk to her in, uh, in about six months and see what's scarier, seeing you race or seeing Cole race. I think, I don't think the speeds, because like I said, I think he goes, they go faster at Joe's karting. Yeah at this point than they do at his at his level at uh, Eagle. So he'll be all right for a couple of years until he gets going faster. Now the micros and the midgets, they might get a little faster for him. So, Cole, uh, what else you got going on? What, what do you do outside of racing? I play basketball, football, and I just started lacrosse this year. Oh, really? Lacrosse? You don't get a lot of that in this area. It's a select. It's a Sarpy County team. It's yeah. not even a city team because there's not enough kids to do it so how did you get exposed to that did you see it on espn and decide i want to try it no i quit soccer because i played it since i was three yeah. so then i i didn't have anything to do in the spring so i just decided to start a different sport well now that you're racing you're never going to have off time <laughs> so just just get used to it <laughs> you're always going to be working on the car tinkering adjusting running to speedway picking up parts <laughs> On your bicycle. Yep. <laughs> uh, Gina V, excuse me, yeah, Gina V Therapy. Where's that at, and how can people find out more? What do you guys do there? Well, we're Other in, than physical uh, therapy, but. We're in downtown Papillion. She's okay. been open for four years. Um, basically, if anything you need, any aches and pains you have, mm-hmm. um, anything you are have a bad knee or bad back or bad muscle pains you think is normal, it's not normal. Um, you shouldn't have to take pain medications. They that's what we try to tell people. She's. I've had a pain for about five things, years. So. Can you take care of this? Um, yeah. So <laughs> Sarah could use the same advice. My girlfriend could definitely use that same therapy. <laughs> I mean, the, her motto, basically the slogan, the motto is just the getting you back to doing the things you love. That's just that's yeah. what they do. So you try to focus on the holistic aspect where it's not prescription based. <laughs> oh, we don't hey, we don't do the prescriptions and stuff like that. So yeah. it's. Usually she's got, she does some pretty magic hands, I guess. So yeah. She fixed a lot of people. So it's got to be nice for you. I mean, if you get some aches and pains, hey, hun, take you out to dinner. Well, I'm just as bad as most of the patients. I don't do my exercises like <laughs> she wants, and then I, she'll 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 work on me for one day, yeah. and and then I it doesn't help if you don't keep up the exercises stretches. Right. So, Mark Vanderheiden driving another 15V Sprint car, planning on racing uh, Eagle Raceway most Saturday nights, hitting some of the Sprint Series in Nebraska races. Uh, anything, uh, Race Saver Nationals again, you're going to do that again? Yeah. That's a little bit too fun not to go to, right? Yeah, and historically, I guess, the second, my second season in 2014, I actually made the show, which is the biggest thing in my life at this point, so then, uh, for race-wise, and then uh, we didn't have a very good showing this last year, but that's just luck of the draw, I guess. Yeah. So. Cole, oh. going in, go ahead, Dirk. I was going to say, why don't you take a second and uh, tell us about some of your sponsors? Well, our newest sponsor, I guess, would be the Forward Bite. Um, it's a new apparel brand that we actually started, me and Cole did, so we're excited about getting that going. That's on Facebook. Um, we're getting ready to launch 
um, towards the end of March here. So if you go look at forwardbikeco.com, uh, that's something that we've been putting a lot of time and energy into there. But uh, some of my biggest sponsors on the actual car would, would be Phoenix Pools out of um, Omaha. You got B. Douglas Construction out of Gretna. Um, Papio Pit Barbecue from Papillion. We got 316 Strategy Group, which is in Omaha. We have Twisted Vine from Papillion. We have RV, Randy Vanderheiden Trucking, my mm. uncle. Uh, we got Soul and Swag from Omaha. We have Barrett Clinic from La Vista and Gina V Physical Therapy, obviously. I think that's all of them. That's a yeah. lot of them. <laughs> that's a good list of sponsors. That's a lot of them. You and write them the down. newest one, yes, if you didn't see, Big John's Billiards from Omaha just came on last week. So Who did? I'm sorry? Big John's Billiards. No kidding. Um, you look the, a lot like I know, Bill. I know the owner. How do you How do you know Bill? Uh, Bill and me are cheer dads together. No kidding. So his daughter's on our, our uh, daughter's cheer team, so we'll be with him to Dallas. I was with him on Sunday Yeah. Uh, for cheer as well. So He's a great I'll guy. I'll be hanging out with him on weekends. So. I've worked with Bill for, gosh, 12, 13 years. And, uh, yeah, he's a great guy. I love Bill. Yep. Hi, Bill. Why isn't his name Big Bill's Billiards? Uh, His dad is John, I believe. Uh, I believe. No, his dad is Bill Sr. I don't know where the Bill came from. The the John came from. I remember that story at one point in time, but it's been 12 years. (laughs) I think he told me the story, too, but I don't remember it either. Might have been over some beers. (laughs) 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 All right, guys, appreciate your time. Best of luck in 2020 for the 15V of Mark Vanderheiden. And, Cole, you never did say what your number is going to be. Well, I'm going to be the junior 15V. Okay. And it's going to be fun. All right. 15V (laughs) 2.0. Good luck to you, man. We're still debating the junior part because I'm like, well, you're never going to be in the same class as me. Probably not. So we might just keep it at 15V. So we'll see. Yeah. Or you can do your own number. What's your favorite number? Is it 15? Well, my basketball and football number is 12, but yeah. I want to stick 15V Yeah, because it's racing. Yeah, it's, it's a family thing. Always yeah. always carry on the dad's number. All right, guys, appreciate you coming on the show. All right, uh, thank best you. luck to you this season, and we'll talk to you soon. All right, thanks, guys. We'll thank be back. You. We'll be back on the front stretch. If you love wings, if you love rings, and all kinds of other tempting. Quaker Steak and Lube is the official watering hole of the front stretch and the home of Mav TV, featuring action from the Lucas Oil Late Model Series. Great times, great food. Get to Quaker Steak and Lube. Located on Mid America Drive in Council Bluffs. We all have that coworker that runs their mouth off at how great they are. They shot a five under par, 95 mile an hour fastball, bench press 375, bra. Wouldn't you love to shut them up by schooling them at Joe's Karting? Council Bluffs' premier indoor karting track, professionally designed so each corner is your opportunity to embarrass your coworker. Call Buddy for your next company outing at 712 256 5278. Joe's Karting, white knuckle racing just across the river on 20. 3rd Avenue next to AMC 17. Feather the break and get back to the gas. Dan and Dirk are headed into turn three on the front stretch. Welcome back to the front stretch. Just about ready to do another Red Oak Fabrication interview. Don't forget, all of your powder coating needs are available in Red Oak, Iowa on the intersection of Highway 34 and 48 in Red Oak, Iowa. Get your race car, your parts and pieces, uh, whether it be farm implement, anything you need done, powder coated for an affordable price, uh, an affordable price in Red Oak, Iowa. So are we going to do this interview or are we just about ready to? We're going to do it. Said okay. you were about Holy ready to. God, look at that. Dirk just got served my absolute favorite food in the world, the jacked up BLT. So let's talk fast. Oh, oh God, now I can smell it. Can from you the... smell it? Oh, oh. Again, I'm getting the free smell. Thick cut. What do they call it? Thick cut. Smoke. Market bacon. bacon. I mean, it's it's basically it it's a ham. Yeah, it's folded it, in half. Yeah, it, it, it is. It's it's spiral cut ham, well smoked, perfectly seasoned. Lots of it. And we're supposed to be talking about powder coating right now. <laughs> RedOakFabrication.com for more information. You can always get an estimate at Jordan F. at RedOakFabrication.com. If you ever come to Quaker Steak, make sure you ask for Hannah. She does a great job. She takes great care of us at the front stretch. Joining us on the show now, one of the great supporters and promoters of our great sport, Psycho Billy Cadillac. How you doing, big guy? Pretty good. Thanks for having me, man. Oh, it's always good to have you on the show. It's been far too long. In fact, I'm not entirely sure we've ever had you on the show before. Even though you've been a part of uh, racing in this area for quite a while. 
Yeah, I don't do this too often. Prefer to lay low. Yeah, not do the interviews. Go ahead and get up nice and close and, and a little bit uncomfortable to that microphone. It's, say, say with how colorful your car yeah. is, I mean, it's kind of, be kind of tough for you to lay low. Yeah, I that's, that's hiding. He's not going to rob a bank in that car, that's for sure. <laughs> Testing 5-3. There Testing you go. Testing 5-2. <laughs> I took all the one-twos. It's three-fours from now on. All right, uh, Psycho Billy, and you got a Facebook page that you've been running, uh, doing kind of unconventional promoting of dirt racing for the last couple of years. Yeah, pretty proud. I think we're the only uh, national media outlet in the country that does play-by-play via script. So we're pretty proud of that. Hold on, via script? Yep. Kind of. You're gonna have to explain how that works. I don't have a microphone. We just typing it in. Play-by-play. Oh, okay, I get you now. Do everything on Facebook. So what? you you update the fans on a regular basis on a on a minute basis of what's going on at the racetrack. Try and post photos of every single late model at the show. Yeah, and we'll do like lineups. We might do a pit walk. And you do a car show too, oftentimes with the best, best appearing, appearing car. car. Best appearing car, yes. Is, it, is that just? For, I, I know you do it for the Silver Dollar Nationals, but do you do it for other shows? All over the place. Oh yeah, he goes every show in the country. We, yeah, we kind of stopped the first part of last year and then uh, decided to start it up again. Yeah. It's, I was going to say, I thought I was overwhelmed with uh, traveling with the uh, Malvern Bank Tour this year. I mean, this guy goes all across the country and back again. I mean, he, he has hit some of the biggest late model races that America has to offer. You know, the Wild West Shootout down in Arizona. He's, I believe he's been down to Speed Weeks in uh, Georgia and Florida. He's hit a, a few regional, like, Lucas Oil races around the, uh, the Midwestern United States. Uh, UMP Summer Nationals, Show Me 100, I believe. Uh, I believe you got the All world. Right. One, you got All the right. you're rubbing it in world now. 100 as well. So I want to know if your this wife's res- got a sister. This resume is <laughs> this this guy's resume is beyond impressive uh, when it comes to late model fans. The craziest thing happened. We went to war with Iraq. I got laid off from my main job. Never went to college. Went to Nebraska workforce, you know, to see what they could come up with for me. Yeah. They told me about a scholarship program. Said you have to take a test. I won the friggin' test after being out of school for like 25 years. Huh. Got a full scholarship ride, decided to go after the dream job. You know, studied business management, marketing. Two years after I graduated, started the fans tour. And here we are. That's right. I, yeah, just. <laughs> I mean, what a great job, though. I mean, I. Yeah, my boss is still here. It's, I mean, like, yeah. luckily he doesn't pay much attention to me, but I mean, <laughs> you think about it, we get paid to watch report and promote dirt racing. This is a dream job. Can you really get any better than that? that? Is that not the American dream right there? Um, we don't get paid much, so I don't know if it's the American dream. <laughs> it's, it's, we could get the travel it's a, it's paid a on dream it. of, It's a dream of American proportions. I right, think. right. It's Well, it's, it's an American dream paid at the Mexican proportions. <laughs> very true, very true. I'm going to have to edit all this out. Because <laughs> I may be without jobs come this Come this race season, but uh, Bill, you've been doing it. one of the things you do always at the uh, at the Silver Dollar Nationals is the uh, the car show, and and kind of talk about how that came about and how the whole thing happens. Well, we started. We we're just all about the fans, you know. Everything we did was entirely about the fans. I believe it was season two. Decided to you know just host a best appearing car when I was a kid. The track I went to, you know, they had one of those like once a year. Dirt on dirt had done it at the World One Hundred for several years. Yeah. So I decided to do it, do it at every single show we go to. And it's it, so. What are the qualifications? I mean, basically, do you post every picture of every car and just say vote on it, or do you you select certain ones? Strictly up to me. Yeah. Uh, depending on how it looks. W- what are your preferences for anybody that's getting their car ready to get lettered? By the way, Action Signs, uh, great opportunity to get your car lettered. Uh, never, never gonna miss up an opportunity to take care of our good friend Stan Caesar. But uh, what are some of the criteria for 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 uh, for catching Psycho Billy Cadillac's eye? Fresh sheet metal, fresh aluminum, fresh wrap. Yeah. A lot of drivers will just do their driver's side because, I don't know, because it's the side they get in on or whatever. But I'm more concerned about the passenger side. That's the side that faces the grandstand. Yeah. Both sides have to be close to mint condition. Okay. Sometimes if you're on the hill, too, or every car is scratched up. You know, <laughs> smaller tracks up in Wissota Country, mm-hmm. there are certain events where you have to lose some scratches or tire rub or whatever. But uh, typically like a crown jewel event when everybody has, you know, both sides clean. Uh. Now, for, for me, as, as in a selfish announcer, I love a contrasting number to paint scheme because it's so much easier to see from the booth at I-80 Speedway all the way across the backstretch. 
that's kind of one of the guidelines we put out there. One of the one of our guest judges had mentioned that uh, should probably uh, uh, give a shout out to our guest judges. We yeah. recruit racing fans who tune into our page. Say we have like ten judges on any race night. We try and make those ten judges from ten different states. Okay. So it's completely, uh, you know, uh, no favoritism mm-hmm. kind of thing going on. We don't want to have like we cover short ID speed. We don't want to have ten judges from Lincoln or. Because naturally, the Nebraska guys are going to get more love than the greater Iowa guys. We do our best, you know, in that part. (laughs) So there are some criteria to picking your judges. Uh, You you decide who is going to be eligible in the contest. You post pictures of them. How long are they up for? Do fans get to vote, or is this strictly a judging contest? We like doing the awards before the sun goes down. That way we can get a great, uh, Mm -hmm. you know, photo, the awards presentation. So. Typically, it's a very short window, like maybe 30 to 60 minutes to vote. Okay. Yeah, he usually puts out on his uh, on his site there on Facebook, and he'll say, looking for six more people to judge my car show tonight, send me an instant message, and then he messages you back and says, all right, you're in, I'll send you the cars, and just rank them one to ten. Sometimes it's, you have drivers pulling in late, so we usually have the cutoff Calibre. line right around hot laps, <laughs> and we like to have the, you know, the award to be announced, like right around B feature time. Yeah. And what, what does the driver win? Normally, it's a gift cer- just a just a certificate, yeah. just a paper certificate. Uh, there are tracks around the country where we bring a sponsor in, or we might, might be a hundred bucks, two hundred bucks, three hundred bucks kind well, of I thing. But uh, I eighty Speedway candy wrappers got involved with it, and I think you're giving them all the bag, true. nice bags of candy popcorn, aren't you? Or Last something year like we that? did. Yes. Is that the Colby Ridge popcorn? There you go. That stuff yeah. is so good. We say we get the the sweet shot to do it. We have the eye candy award. There you mm-hmm. go. Yeah, we do it typically for bragging rights. Uh, you know, their sponsors, the rap company, you know, gets extra publicity that way. So, so do you do you do primarily just stick with late models, or is there other classes that you'll focus on? We never cover supporting classes. We never cover weekly late models. Strictly late model special events. Okay. Okay. And uh, what was it? Sometimes you know, so, some of the judges. Uh, I've been fortunate enough to be a, a judge on uh, on many of his uh, fan votes and. Uh, you know, sometimes it, it can it can be kind of tough for uh, to get those to get those votes in. You know, as you're trying to prepare for the race itself. But uh, uh, one of the other things he he does, I've been a, a part of a couple of times when we go over to Denison, Iowa, for a Malvern Bank show. You know, he he finds uh, uh, maybe a, a, someone involved in the uh, racing series that he's covering, and uh, you know, you get a chance to kind of it's almost kind of a, a miniature pre-race show. You know, you get a, a quick interview with someone who. Uh, Who's at the event? You know, uh, what could we possibly expect from the races? And uh, you know, just give an overall look at the series and the track that that we're visiting. And overall, it, it's it's pretty much uh, an overall fan experience, uh, uh, depending on which track you go to. Very true. <laughs> how many uh, how many miles <laughs> did sorry. you put on your go? You got you got to talk a lot more because Dirk is just dying to get this interview over with so he can eat his sandwich. So I'm going to need you to talk a lot more than that. Anthony asked a question for five and a half minutes. You took two seconds to answer it. <laughs> My good friend Corey Seitner <laughs> gave me some tips here. There you go. There you go. <laughs> I'm going to so, stay true to this. All right. All right. Uh, <laughs> Fair enough. we got to go at least 15 minutes. Okay. Right, how, Dirk? How many miles? Uh. <laughs> how many miles do you put on your vehicle last year? 35,000. That's all? That's but, uh, I would think I thought it would be more. God. So. I complain about my 20,000 I put on. Yeah, but yours is back and forth to the bar. You don't go anywhere. I still complain about the amount of miles I put on. And a lot of trips back and forth to the bar. And like I mentioned before, you, you've covered uh, many of the uh, the top late model events uh, all across America. Uh, is there uh, a certain a certain late model event that uh, stands out above all the others? Because you know, seeing the resume you have, uh, are there is there one event or a, a series of a series of races that? Uh, that you tend to like to cover more than the others or one that um, consistently stands out above the others? It's tough not to like the Crown Jewel events, you know, Silver Dollar Nationals, Prairie Dirt Classic, Knoxville Late Model Nationals. It's one of the smaller known tracks that I really love. I love the little bull rings. Little track in Watertown, South Dakota, Casino Speedway. They have such a small grandstand, it would be awesome. I'd pay $100 to go see a Lucas or a late model dirt series race or a World of Outlaws race on that little bull ring. Don't give anybody an idea, especially of a guy named Joe Kaziski. <laughs> <laughs> he may buy the track and run a race there. I, I thought somewhere, I thought the uh, I thought the Outlaw late models were going to go up to Huron this year. Is that or it was the Outlaw sprints that were going to go up there to Huron? That's a, 
believe the sprint cars are, yes. Yep. It, it's tough for me because I'm, I'm so close to the situation, and, and I want it to be true, but is the Silver Dollar Nationals a crown jewel event? Absolutely. It is. Oh, def- Abs- yeah? Definitely. Because def- it's, it's, it's ri- I think it's absolutely a rising star. But, I don't, but not having the history in sports like everybody else at this table does, I have a tough time selling myself in the belief that the Silver Dollar Nationals is with the World 100 and the dream. I think it's bigger than the Knoxville Nationals, in my opinion. Everybody has their own definition. My definition is, you know, a two-day event where you have qualifying on the first day and then the features on the second day. Okay, that's it. With a minimum of twenty-five to 30000 to win. Yeah, I was going to say, gonna say that's purse. kind of my minimum. It's like usually around the... Uh, if it if it pays like thirty thousand or more to win, and then yes, and you bring in like uh, regardless of how of like what series it sanctions or if it's a non-sanctioned race, because there are a few uh, crown jewel non-sanctioned races. You know, yeah. get Gateway Dirt Nationals, National One Hundred down in Alabama. But uh, yeah, usually usually kind of my my personal like uh, was it I'm trying to say kind of. Uh, I, I'm forgetting what I'm trying to say. Your but, personal uh, crown jewel? Yes. The, my personal preference on qualif- what makes a crown jewel a crown jewel event is like like the 30000 uh to win. Get, yeah. Uh, I think you're right, Andrew. Amount. I believe, if I'm not mistaken, Lucas Olet Model Dirt Series is upped it to 12000 to win every single race. So, you know, over a two-day event, that'd be twenty four k. So, really, a 25000 to win event, you know, is basically the same money as, mm-hmm. like, two individual paying races. So, I think 30000 yeah, about that. You know, you get the, you, you know, you have the few hundred thousand to win shows, and then right. of course you get the Silver Dollar Nationals, fifty three thousand to win, and all that. So it's it's pretty fun to see, um, like, just to have a crown jewel event in this part of the country. Psycho yes. Psycho Billy Cadillac joining us on the show now. Dirk is uh, absolutely going nuts trying to not dive into these. This uh, uh, jacked up BLT. And, I might and just be doing a face plant here in a minute. <laughs> do it, Dirk. Do Either it. Either he's going in to take a big bite or he's going to fall asleep. One or the other. It's a pretty late night at Quaker Steak and Loop. Psycho Billy, we appreciate you joining us on the show. Talk about uh, some of the great sponsors that help you uh, do what you do and how people can follow you on Facebook. Oh, my. We probably have about 100 sponsors throughout the year. They're all, you know, pretty much equal. Don't have a title sponsor of our series, so. If anybody's interested, you know. Mom and pop hotels, you get gas stations and whatnot, you know, come and goes, whatever. I've seen your stuff, and you, and you do a good job yeah. of posting all that out there. You need to talk, you need to talk Quaker um, Steak into it. Yeah. I want to be different from all the other media outlets, so, you know, we kind of focus on tours, and we love promoting tours, and that's the reason I do this. I love to travel. Love to crank up the jam in the car. The Beatles. So, like, what? promoting restaurants, promoting hotels. Mm-hmm. What's that uh, picture you brought down to show off to everybody tonight? Thought I'd bring that along. That is uh, our 2019 points championship. It's a painting that was done. Usually we have funky looking stuff. Uh, we've had a gazelle. Also, oh yeah, that that's the one that uh, you gave to Bobby Pierce, right? I mean, you, you took a right. What was it? How tall was that? Like six or seven feet tall. It was like a giant gazelle trophy, and uh, I believe you delivered that to Bobby Pierce during uh, during the PRI, the PRI show in Indianapolis. Yeah, it was about six foot tall. Yeah, anyway, uh, this uh, wonderful gal named Sharon from Florida, I saw one of her pictures on Facebook. And I asked her, hey, would you want to, you know, draw a painting for a points champion? So Brandon Shepard won our points championship. This is with, I think, like 81 events, 17 different sanctioning bodies. Brandon Shepard won it. Just need to touch bases with him to deliver. It'll probably be at, like, the Thaw Brawl or the Lion I-100 late March, early April. He's got a little talent behind him. So I think I think Brandon Shepard is probably my odds-on favorite for the Silver Dollar Nationals this year. He's probably the best driver who hasn't won it yet. He's been so close so many times. As long as Jimmy Owens isn't in front of him, he's in good shape. <laughs> well, I mean, or Bobby Pierce or Scott Bloomquist. I mean, the, the guys came from the farthest back. I think of anybody. Uh, uh, Year far, round, uh, farthest to uh, farthest to ever come back, uh, come from the rear. Up to the front would be Ryan Gustin. That well, one year he didn't yeah, finish up there. He didn't finish, didn't finish, finish, finish it. <laughs> <but> that, <laughs> that really didn't work out. Drivers to Brandon Shepard. Brandon Shepard. He came from thirty second to finish second. Yeah, he came out of the last chance race to run to run second. That's Shepard right. really struggled in his house car last year to see him run well. You know, down there at Wild West Shootout, uh, 
you know, he could even top last year. Let's see if we can get Tyler Carpenter to join the Nationals this year. Psycho Billy Cadillac. Find him on Facebook is the best way to follow you, correct? That is true. Thanks again for having me. Thanks for allowing me to record video of, of all these interviews that you did tonight. Truly, truly Absolutely. appreciate it. Of course. Uh, we always do appreciate it. We'll, uh, we'll see you at the racetrack soon. Absolutely. What's your first race in 2020? First race will probably be the Thaw Brawl. The last weekend in March. Okay. It's a two-day show. So All right. Where's that at? That's Donaldson, Donaldson right? Iowa. All right, then. You'll see him at Donaldson, Iowa for the Thaw, the thaw Brawl. Thaw, thaw brawl. brawl. That's a combination of three different races that I work at. But anyways, <laughs> the Thaw Brawl. Boy, that's not... I'm that's so glad a, I'm not the radio uh, announcer that has to promote that race. I that's I'd uh, screw Lee, that up. Lee County Speedway. Six ways from Wednesday. All right. Thanks, everybody, for listening. Uh, we're going to take a quick break. We'll be back on the front stretch. Every race car driver has run into the same problem. It's well past normal parts store closing hours, but you need that one to finish your car. The guys who brought you white knuckle racing by the river bring you Joe's Karting Racing Parts and Tire Store. Open until 10 p.m. Monday to Thursday and open until 11 p.m. on Friday and Saturday. A part store that fits your after-hours schedule and you can turn a few laps at Joe's Karting while you're waiting for your part to get pulled from their warehouse. Joe'sKarting.com for more information. Don't be that guy on the work site freezing his lug nuts off wondering why he never went to Red Oak Fabrication for incredibly warm and working man-proof gear. From simple work gloves, boots, or hats to full jackets and coveralls, Carhartt from Red Oak Fabrication will keep you warm during the brisk winter months for a lot less than those big city prices. Find them online at redoakfabrication.com slash Carhartt. Like their Facebook page for monthly specials and stop by in person on the corner of 3rd Street and East Grimes in Red Oak, Iowa. Omaha Virtual Reality in the heart of Benson, half a block south of 60th and Maple is a race fan's haven. Omaha Virtual Reality is a fully immersive racing experience. Sit down and a full race seat with real-time responsive shocks while wearing a state-of-the-art virtual reality headset. Race around Daytona, Indy, Sonoma, and over 50 more tracks while feeling every twist and turn. Omaha Virtual Reality is truly an experience every race fan should try. Put the controller down and get in the game. More info at omahavirtualreality.com. It's checkers or wreckers as we enter turn four on the front stretch. Presented by Joe's Karting and Council Bluffs. Just about ready to wrap this baby up, rolling into turn number four on the front stretch, brought to you by Quaker Steak and Lube, the official watering hole of the front stretch. And Dirk, I got to tell you, uh, Wednesday night we went down and uh, got to do one of our favorite things, was just sit at the table, eat some great food, talk some racing, and I got to give myself a little bit of credit. I don't ever do that enough, but this Chive TV has been on all night long with people oh. biffing it and tripping and falling and breaking stuff and I haven't broken concentration more than 15 times. Yeah. I'm proud of myself. I'm right in there with you. There were some of those on there that I had. I got a switch on my mic so I could turn it off while I was over here. <laughs> 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 laughing at them. But yeah. Some of the stuff was just incredible. Whatever uh, whatever they're showing is just hilarious. You can catch Chive TV every second that Quaker Steak and Lube is open. Just get to Council Bluffs. Great new menu. In fact, on Wednesday night, I got to try the salmon that has made its triumphant return to, uh, to Quaker Steak and Lube for the first time in a couple of years, and my God, that salmon is good. I know what I'm trying next time after seeing those double burgers right across the table. I, boy, you better, you better bring a partner for that thing. Those oh. things are huge, aren't they? Got to say a big thank you to Quaker Steak and Lube once again for sponsoring the front stretches they've done for so many years. All of the action for today's race is on the big screen to Quaker Steak and Lube. The Auto Club 400, I believe it is on Fox and MRN today with coverage starting uh, 1 o'clock, and I believe the race is set to start at about 2.30, so that means picks are due by 2 o'clock today. Yeah, it'll be the West Coast time again. And a lot of the teams, as I've been seeing on Facebook, just uh, hung out in Vegas for a couple extra days and cruising straight on over to Fontana. Yeah, might as well, absolutely. Uh, we want to cover a couple of the news and notes that we didn't get to since the last time we talked to you. Uh, of course, Ryan Newman comes out on Sunday after the show had aired and uh, released a statement, said... Uh, that he is recovering after his head injury and wants to race again. Just the way that that re headline reads makes me feel like he's going to be gone for a while. Oh, yeah, yeah. And, and we mentioned it just a little bit in, in turn one. Um, the last significant head injury that we had to deal with was Dale Earnhardt. And he came back, you know, after uh, about two months and came back for a couple races and then took the rest of the year off. And, yeah. Uh, it wasn't long after that that you know he went ahead and called it called it a career. And, and uh, you, if you get a head injury, it's a one-time deal. Yeah, you know, 
You know, we're, we're dealing with stuff now that it, it's it's great to, to to talk like a tough guy on social media and say, you know, back in my day, I, 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 I beat my head on my desk and I went and ran a, a half mi- marathon. Well, that's great. The reason why you talk like that is because you beat your head on your desk and didn't take the time to recover it. You know, these these guys, not only football players, baseball players, athletes, but also just regular people. You've only got one brain. And boy, when that thing starts going, life gets really, really tough. Well, when I first started teching cars out at Sunset Speedway, we'd have guys bragging about buying a $2,500 carburetor in a $200 to win class, but they only right. spent 80 bucks on their helmet. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And, and, you know, those are the guys that we talk about tribute to in Memorial Race 4, as opposed to guys like Ryan Newman that have millions of dollars of safety innovations wrapped around them that he is forced by the sanctioning body to have. And he is talking about uh, wanting to get back into racing one of these days. But he's going to take his time and get back to it. You know, a head injury, they all heal at different paces. There's, there's nothing that says it's a six-week timetable for this. It's an eight-week timetable for that. It's, we're going to keep testing you every week. And when you uh, reach a certain benchmark, you're cleared to go yeah, back racing. you're back in. And it's just all kinds of stuff. And everybody's seen specials where they, you know, do a bunch of the different tests they do. It's... Uh, a big portion of its hand-eye coordination. Mm-hmm. And, I remember. Uh, it, it, or, I remember this conversation a few years ago after the Dale Earnhardt thing, where the Drivers Alliance requested NASCAR to do some sort of concussion testing and cognitive. And I believe I don't know if they implemented it or if it was just talk, but I remember hearing something about a benchmark at the beginning of the year. Each driver has to sit down and go through a series of tests. And then they'll apply those same tests after a concussion to, to wait for your responses. It's the way you respond, the time it takes, and that kind of stuff. Yeah, very do you, well. Could do you know be. anything? Do you, can no. You confer- okay. No, that, that would have come after my time. I mean, I was around when they you know, started doing the Hans device, and I saw the initial testing and all the films on safer barriers and stuff, which was all developed in Lincoln. And uh, so I was around when all that was going on. Uh, the car tomorrow was being developed while I was working for them, so I got to see that being put together. And, you know, got to see some of the first-hand innovation at the uh, facility there in uh, just outside of Charlotte and Concord. And uh, Well, I, I think this was just a couple of years ago. So I want to say it was like the, yeah. the year after Earnhardt, uh, that the Junior had all of his issues. Moving on to the next big headline, we have talked a lot about 2021. I think I'm more excited for 2021 than I've been for any NASCAR season because uh, I, I think that this could be a big precedent year for the changes that NASCAR is willing to make when that schedule comes out. And we got a little bit of news uh, earlier this week that there is rumors that NASCAR is offering single-year deals to a lot of the racetracks as an opportunity. So, so a few years ago, uh, this was obviously what, 2020, it was about 2015, 2016 is, or 2014, 2015 is when they offered five-year contracts to a lot of the tracks. And the reason why they did that was so that they could offer stability to these racetracks for them to go out and sign big uh, big contracts, long-term deals, be able to secure contracts. And the fans in the area knew NASCAR is coming to our track twice a year, uh, at least once a year for the next five years. Now NASCAR has kind of transitioned a little bit, and they've said we're going to – well, not they have said, but there is rumors that the conversation is single-year contracts. So that way they can be more flexible. If they want to decide, you know what, we're going to adjust and we're going to move you around to a different race, or we're going to drop you off the schedule for maybe two years – They've got that flexibility. Well, and it's, it's not necessarily them wanting to drop people off, but people just saying, you know, we can't do this this year, you know, or whatever. If they have a bad year uh, for whatever reason or don't get the sponsorship signed up like they want for their track to, to be able to do a full tilt deal, you know, they take a year off and recoup. You know, racers do it. Why can't the, yeah. why can't the track owners? And, I mean, we're seeing a lot of track, uh, a lot of schedule changes this year. Yeah. So, you know, we can NASCAR is going to take a look and, and see what happened this year. And I think another reason that the one-year contract deals will be a big thing is they can move dates around. Yeah. You know, um, this year, you know, they uh, doing the back-to-back deal at Pocono so they can take a week off for the Summer Olympics. Right. And now, I mean, there's real, there's a lot of talk about no Summer Olympics. Yeah. So, I mean, if, if they turn around here in six weeks and cancel the Summer Olympics, is NASCAR going to take... And split those weekends up again for Pocono? I doubt it. Yeah, I doubt it. With everything that has to go into those schedule designs logistics. And, and logistics, I, I think that, that train's moving forward to a double header, and it would it would be a little difficult to stop that train. Uh, but I absolutely love this flexibility, and and they're able to give the fans what they want. Uh, so they're able to basically kind of maybe put the tracks on onus and say, 
you guys got to start finding ways to maximize your dollars and making the experience great. Because I know that there has been conversation within the tracks themselves that there are certain racetracks that just aren't doing squat to bring an experience the weekend. We get to experience Kansas Speedway and Iowa Speedway twice a year, respectively. Uh, uh, twice a year, both, actually. And I think we get spoiled a little bit because Kansas and Iowa both go to the nines to put on an experience for their fans. I know there's some tracks that just they don't give a hoot. They show up, take your ticket, have fun at the race. Yeah, I don't know if there's any, any tracks like that. There's... Because all this stuff going on, you know, I've seen the tire drop thing at, at Kansas Speedway. I know that goes on. I don't say it goes on at every track, but I know it goes on at other tracks. Other tracks have a lot of stuff going on in their camping areas. Um, yeah, it's, people are, are paying so much money for these tickets, and actually the prices have gone down. The yeah. prices haven't gone up. Well, and, and they're paying so much for the weekends. I mean, right. that's the thing that we've had a tough time with, especially budgeting for the show, is hotel rooms are ridiculous. Yeah, I mean, we, not, we might have to start sleeping in the back of my truck. <laughs> yeah, there's not room. I'm, gonna I'm not going to do that to I'm anybody. I'm going to go stay with Chris. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I'm excited to see. I think this is another step of the process that, that we're going to see a, a big 2021 change for the schedule. I'm still very hopeful and faithful that uh, we're going to see Iowa Speedway on the Cup Series schedule. If not 2021, then probably 2022 or 23. But I'm very hopeful that Iowa's going to get a cup race. And I think a lot of the, there's a lot of signs that continue to happen that that's moving in the right direction. Right, right. That absolutely is. And uh, the other one that's, that's going to be a major change, and it's going to happen a little bit this year, is the Xfinity running the road course in Indy. That's going to be really neat. I'm, you know, I'm excited to see how that works. We've talked 100 times about not liking that race. <sighs> and it's only been around, I think the first one was 94. Mm -hmm. uh, and that race has just gone downhill, and they've had a few... You know, they had the one race with the tire deal where they had to pit every 10 laps. It was just Woo! just disgusting. That was and, fun. Uh, but I think if that Xfinity race is anything at all this year, I think next year the uh, Indy race will be, for the cup teams, will be that road course. And I think if that's, a if that's a success, then you may see it make its way up into the cup series. Well, and the second Charlotte race is, is going to be road course, and that's probably a done deal from now on. Yeah, know? I think so. I think it's been a big enough success and, and probably a, a little bit of a testament for NASCAR. Is the reason why NASCAR is trying the road courses because look what we're doing at Charlotte. It's working out well. Let's try the Xfinity Series at, uh, at, at the road course at Indy. Well, uh, I, think, I think they're listening to all the people that run the road course at Joe's Karting. Yeah, that's, that's what it is. Why they're Absolutely. Putting more road courses in. Uh, Ryan Blaney and Daniel Suarez running, running tribute paint schemes to Kobe Bryant, uh, the the late Kobe Bryant who passed away January. Yeah, end of January. End of January, uh, and then uh, at Auto Club this weekend, that apparently raised a little bit of fuss uh, on social media. People believe that it, it's it's appalling that they are paying tribute to another sport when they should be paying tribute to the military. And Dirk, I tell you, boy, NASCAR just doesn't do enough for our military. Well, Can you hear the sarcasm in my voice? Yeah. Well, how come nobody complained when Dale Earnhardt uh, ran a pinstripe car uh, and a paint scheme off a of baseball? Mm. You know, um, Kenny Wallace has had, uh, you know, being from St. Louis, has had tons of stuff done with the St. Louis Cardinals. You know, um, there's some other sports that people are doing stuff with. I mean, Brett Favre owned part of a race team for several years. Uh, Randy Moss was involved in the truck series for several years. You know, they're all right with that. Yeah. You know, I, I don't know what this deal is. And, I mean, I read the deal from Blaney, and he said he got to meet Kobe and was very impressed with him as a person. Well, he I said, I didn't go to a basketball game. I met him. You know, I met the man. Yeah. I think the, the sponsor, the, the body armor sponsor, was a, uh, a, a sponsor of Kobe Bryant. Right. And so That's that correct. it's. So there's a revenue issue that comes. There's a revenue deal that comes with yeah, this. Yeah, it's, it's a combination Listen, of things. No NASCAR team is going to turn down the U.S. Army, the U.S. Navy, the National Guard, uh, any of the branches of the military if they come to them and say, "Hey, we want to throw some sponsorship dollars your way." Uh, Dale Jr. ran the the the, uh, the National Guard car for how many years? Uh, there's a money that comes to it, and you know, I, you always hear everybody in the sport say, "We do we do this better. We have the greatest fans. We have the greatest exposure. We have this." NASCAR truly does give the greatest exposure to their stars, and I don't think that any sport does better for the military than NASCAR does. From free tickets on the weekends to passes to, to flyovers to tributes to, to NASCAR teams and the sport itself goes above and beyond every single weekend. I mean, I don't know every foundation that's out there, but I know Brad Keselowski's Checkered Flag Foundation is uh, strictly benefits 
veterans and first responders. Absolutely. That's all his stuff does. Kurt Busch is buying, is it 50 tickets for military personnel at every race this yeah. year? Yeah. I think the number was 50. I'm He's, not sure. Uh, they do a great deal for the military. I mean, it's, it's a... It, it's a true honor. I know for a lot of those guys that it's an automatic. Let's take care of the military. I know we've watched as uh, when we're walking through the pits, you know, I, I remember Brad Kozlowski, we were trying to get an interview with him, and he would said, yep, let's walk over to the hauler, and I'll take care of you. Two military guys walk up, and he says, hang on, guys. Absolutely. Take care yeah. of the military, guys. We were second nature, and I'm absolutely fine with that. Uh, and then once they were done, we got our turn with Brad, and, and it, was, uh, it was a really cool experience to, to, uh, the, uh, with him. Uh, but it, it, we've seen that so many times. They're walking through the through the pits. Plain Jane fan. I, we got to get to the. We got to get to our next thing. We got to get to our next thing. Military guy walks up. I'll take the time. Yeah. I'll take the time. It's okay. I'll take the time. Mil, I think the NASCAR NASCAR teams, drivers, the sport itself, they go above and beyond for our military. I have zero problem with them paying tribute to Kobe Bryant. He was a huge influence to so many people in this world. That. To throw him on a, a NASCAR for a weekend is, is fine by me. Yeah, he didn't jump out there in the political arena. Yeah. You know, he branched out and was trying to get into movies and stuff, and he won some time. I don't know what award he won, but he did some, wasn't it a children's like short he, film or I something? I think he did, he directed one, yeah. He uh, won some sort of documentary and award. Doc yeah. I didn't think he was director, I thought he was producer. But, Maybe that was it, but yeah. You know, but he was responsible for the project happening, yeah. you know. And uh, like I said, the fact that you know, he's not out there trying to make a political statement anywhere. He never did any of that. He played his game and was very good at it. Yeah. And, uh, you know, um, he had some problems early on in his career and did a few stupid things. But uh, everything I can say is, you know, he turned around 180 degrees from what he was, you know, 10 or 12 years ago to, yeah. the, to the father and uh, man that he'd become. So uh, I'm, I'm totally on board with this. Next Gen Car is getting tested once again. It, they're going to be back at uh, Auto Club Speedway. This time, um, William Byron is set to test the car at Auto Club Speedway on March 2nd and 3rd. That would be tomorrow and Tuesday. Right. So he's not going to leave today, after today. He'll, uh, he'll stick around and test that Next Gen Car for two days. And... Uh, are you expecting this to be another one of those baseline tests? We've seen a couple of these where oh, we yeah. don't expect them to make a lot of changes. This is probably going to be pretty close to what they have hit the track with the other couple of times, what Austin Dillon, Joey Logano, and it was the third one, right? Or was it just those two? Uh, no, there was a – who drove the Toyota? Was it uh, Eric Jones? I think so. Yeah. Yeah, yeah Eric Toyota, Jones. Toyota, they're, they're kind of going on their second go-round for manufacturers. So uh, that's going to be going on. Uh, once again, William Byron testing the next-gen car tomorrow at Auto Club Speedway. And this is just for them to continue to gather more information about how this car is going to react uh, on a single-car basis. Uh, because, I mean, we found out that the, uh, the aero package that we loved so much in 2019 caused a little bit of a, a group qualifying issue. Uh, so they had to go back to single-car qualifying. But they're, they're just fleshing this thing out for now, trying to make sure that they got the best car for 2021. Yeah, and like I said, the biggest thing, and I think uh, what everybody's going to find and what all these crew chiefs are already talking about is is the new wheels and tire combination. So all of their notes, that's one thing in the whatever, 40, 50 years, the basic tire and wheel combination has not changed. So they pretty much knew what tires, you know, they, they went from the uh, bias ply tire to a radial tire, and so they had to develop uh, a new notebook for air pressures and that type of thing, uh, you know, exactly what it did for spring rates and the handling of the car. But now with... Uh, you know, a lot smaller sidewall and a couple inch bigger wheel. It's going to be a whole new ball game in that department. That's going to do it for us today. We want to say a big thank you to everybody for coming out to Quaker Steak and Lube as we interviewed several drivers throughout the area. You'll be hearing those interviews uh, throughout the next couple of weeks. We already played the Mark Vander Heiden interview with his son Cole, and we want to say a big thanks to Psycho Billy Cadillac for coming out uh, in the previous recording session to sit down and have a conversation with us. Uh, for those that are watching the race today, the action will be... Uh, see, now there's a cat jumping on a bed and missed the bed on the Chive TV. And I, you know me. I can't not watch a cat screw up. That looked like my cat, and my <laughs> cat has done that. <laughs> this Chive TV might be the best thing in the world uh, since racing. Uh, all the action for today's race at Auto Club Speedway is on the big screens of Quaker Steak and Lube. Once again, get your picks in by 2 o'clock if you're in the Pickens contest. If you're not, don't worry. There's a five-week contest coming here in just a couple of weeks when you can win crewmen for a day contest at Kansas Speedway. And it sounds like we're going to be working with our good buddies at Starcom Racing once again. 
For Dirk Houston, I'm Dan Taylor. Big thank you to everybody that uh, sponsors the Fred Stretch and comes out and supports us. We'll do it again next weekend uh, on AM 590. The official watering hole of the Front Stretch has you covered any day of the week with the best wings, great burgers, and amazing steaks. Each weekday from 4 to 6 is Happy Hour, featuring dollar off draft and well drinks plus $4 Luberitas. Mondays are Kids Night. Tuesdays are all-you-can-eat wings for $12.95, and the lube even delivers to the Council Bluffs area. Like Quaker Steak and Lube Council Bluffs on Facebook for a full list of weekly events. Get to Quaker Steak and Lube. Mid-America Drive, Council Bluffs. Hey, look at that. You're sitting on your couch playing Halo, Madden, or NASCAR while your friends are at Joe's Karting. Each lap is an adrenaline-filled, heart-pumping, white-knuckle experience that you can only get at the Metro's largest indoor karting track. Eco-friendly Honda engines rip you around their professionally designed road course at breakneck speeds. Can you reach the 14-second lap bracket? There's only one way to find out. Put the controller down and get to Joe's Karting, 23rd Avenue in Council Bluffs next to Quaker Steak and Lube. This has been the Front Stretch Radio Show, presented by Joe's Carding and Council Bluffs. To contact Dan or Dirk, find them on Facebook at The Front Stretch or email them at frontstretch590 at gmail.com. If you missed any part of today's show or want to hear a previous show, subscribe to the Joe's Carding YouTube page where you can find almost every Front Stretch show.